Hi friend. So uh, this is a uh, lecture on risk-based engineering, and the topic is system reliability modeling. Um, on this topic, four uh, lectures of this week are over, and now this is the fifth and last lecture of uh, fourth week. Um, this is a course on uh, of, uh, on NPTEL course. Uh, it is referred. National Program on Technology and Enhanced Learning. Myself, Professor Prabhakar, we were there. And today, I will take you to, so far, I think we have discussed uh, one, uh, that uh, how the uh, components uh, should be modeled. So the approaches like uh, reliability block diagram, uh, and therein, the series and parallel system, mixed system, mixed configuration um, have been discussed. Then we discussed k out of n number. Uh, in the then we took fault tree and event tree uh, analysis. Fault tree was there in the lecture three, and event tree was in uh, lecture four. So we have uh, we have understood how safety system to be modeled, how initiating event, event uh, to be inducted into the event tree to get the accident sequences, and finally give the safety statement for the. For, for in respect of that event, that is core damage frequency. Um, core damage frequency in PR, okay. So probabilistic risk assessment is a part of this course. Uh, this course. So we'll talk about all these uh, connected aspects in detail and further tools. Now, uh, this lecture is going to be on Markov analysis. It is a very special, uh, special uh, component of uh, this course. Uh, why? Uh, because so far, uh, we have taken, uh, we were dealing in binary event in the sense that either component was operating or component was failed. Okay. Uh, so, um, but then uh, in real time situation, uh, you require the uh, state space modeling. That means component can be in more than one state or the system can be in more than uh, two, three states, especially when you want to account for the repair and maintenance, you know. So, uh, all those aspects uh, which require a, uh, a complex modeling, uh, even at the component level or system level, uh, will be discussed here. And finally, result of this, uh, uh, this uh, Markov models and all that, uh, often they are plugged into the fault tree inventory. And uh, when we go for the dynamic modeling, so the Markov modeling is basically a, a dynamic modeling, while the traditional inventory and fault tree are uh, the static model, what we discuss. So let's say how a Markov model uh, works, what are the basic tenets of Markov model. Uh, so let us say this is a um, Markov model we have here. And the, then it is a two state, com operating state and, and the failed state. So uh, as I said, many states, so operating state and failed state is there. From operating state, the failure rate, uh, inst instantaneous failure rate will take it to the next step. Uh, that is failed state and from failed state the repair aspects uh, will take it to again the operating state. So normally in, uh, in Markov modeling it is assumed that the one system goes to the observe, uh, failed state or observing state. Uh, then uh, there is no uh, further uh, you know analysis but here by through repair we do this. Uh, so this is, um, so the, here the important thing is uh, we have this dynamic parameters uh, which vary with time. And uh, so it becomes a dynamic analysis actually. Uh, it is also referred as a state space, com components a state and how we mo do modeling in the space. A single component can have more than one state, example given success, partially working, failed, uh, under repair, etc. Markov model is the right tool to analyze complexity, complex uh, city of configuration. The link between two state is symbolic uh, representation of transition. So this state is called these are the states and this is called transition, okay, link. Uh, so if we go to one stage here, Markov features, major Markov features are what? It deals with the transition, uh, two concerns, namely the state of the system and time of transition. These two aspects are uh, uh, fundamental to consideration of Markov. It can model both discrete and continuous events, you know. And uh, here, uh, the discrete it says, while, uh, 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 both the states can be mo modeled. Uh, that probability of transition uh, in Markov model, because a, a, a exponential model is co considered here, 
uh, it is a memoryless. So what it considers is that uh, trans transition from process uh, one state to another state is based, based on the memoryless function. It doesn't have a memory actually. Previous state will determine the next step. Before that, there is no memory. And uh, uh, repair uh, this thing are assumed to be constant. That means failure rates are assumed to be constant. As I mentioned, exponential distribution is at the core of this Markov model. The end state of the system is known as the absorbing state, the uh, ideal situation. But you saw one diagram from repair, we have taken it to operation stage. And this is quite possible in real time scenario. Um, but given the time t is equal to infinity, uh, this assumption uh, t is equal to infinity, of course, it will become an absorbing state. Uh, we have seen the taxonomy of Markov modeling uh, in the previous slide. Um, now let's go for uh, a very simple Markov model, uh, you know, and uh, I think we know that Markov models are used uh, for more complex situations uh, than um, 0 and 1, like in fault tree, we can only input either the component is operating or failed. But then suppose if we have to take repair also into account and its effect on total unavailability, uh, then probably uh, and that will uh, take us to uh, this particular situation of taking into uh, repair into account uh, in towards more realistic uh, scenario because repair forms uh, inherent uh, to the uh, component operation or maintenance. So, uh, uh, but uh, to begin with, we'll take a simple Mar Markov model. Uh, that is, a, a component is there, and it has got only two states. That is, either operating state, as uh, we have seen here. Uh, uh, operating state, the so state number one uh, is notified by the uh, operating state, and state number zero, uh, state zero, as failed state. So now you see this. These are the two nodes or states. Uh, state 0, state 1 and this is a transition probability uh, for the component from uh, going from one state to another state okay or that is state 0, state 1 to state 0 and then in that case what will be the probability that the component will remain in the same state that will be 1 minus lambda delta t okay. So accordingly we write the equation, so these are the notation for probability being in state 1, that is an operating state, that is an, uh, and the P02 is the probability of component being in state 0, that is in the failed state. And T plus delta T is the transition time, and so the transition probability will be P1 T plus delta T uh, is equal to 1 minus lambda T, that is the probability of component being in the state 1, and this is the equation and it is uh, uh, identified as equation number one for the component be being in state one. Now, second uh, probability we'll have to evaluate for state zero also. So, uh, uh, what is the probability? The probability that it will be entering from state one to state zero through this uh, path lambda delta t transition probability and being in the state zero. Okay, so since uh, uh, this is not in the any like if you have any uh, event over here, so P02 T, T will be the probability over here because always the failed state will have some probability. Okay, so now we write the uh, write the equation for being in the state uh, zero. Um, so uh, we have here P0 T plus delta T. As I told, transition taking place from uh, state one P1 T. Uh, so lambda delta t p1 t is one probability and state uh, probability being in state 0 is p0 t. So now we got the two equation. Okay? So two variable, two equation, this uh, can be uh, uh, converted to differential equation and it can either be solved uh, using normal uh, uh, methods or it can be, uh, we here will be making it, it a differential equation. So, so um, let us go back to our probability being this because we wanted to come to a uh, equation for reliability. So P1 T plus delta T minus P1 T. That means we have done reshuffling or uh, rearrangement and we got T terms uh, on one side uh, so that we can convert it into a differential equation uh, minus lambda delta T P1 T. And so this term will give me the DP1 by DT. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, then remaining term is P1 T actually lambda P1 T. Now, uh, uh, if we go further, 
uh, if you go further uh, and uh, we solve try to solve this uh, differential equation uh, okay um, what we do is we take integration so ln of p1t differential was there so ln of p1t is equal to uh, we are solving it for 0 to t okay so minus lambda delta x we saw that term now x has become a dummy variable here okay uh, and uh, t is the real uh, parameter so 0 to t plus some constant is integration um, and I, I, if i had to take only p1 t that means uh, the exponential term has gone so uh, so it converts to exponential minus uh, 0 to t del x plus some uh, this uh, constant and finally p1 t some constant exponential um, uh, minus delta t uh, bracket will be there over here okay and so we what we got here uh, we, we got an equation lambda delta is 0 to t and it, it is nothing but the equation for reliability uh, that uh, that is lambda delta integrated over a period of period of time so exponential if I, if I do integration it will become minus lambda t so it will become a equation for the uh, reliability um, so uh, it becomes a general statement but here the repair component is not there so we have to learn how to incorporate the uh, repair component also so for that we have one more example and uh, we have more model for repairable but single component there can be more components but uh, if you want to understand if we take a simple system and uh, then uh, we go towards complexity two, uh, two component three component um, series spiral and Markov model can be developed even uh, there are some software uh, softwares are available to draw the Markov model so but let us see mathematically how we arrive at ourselves so that we have a, uh, a real time understanding of the Markov modeling okay so we have one component uh, operating state is as usual uh, state 1 and the uh, 1 minus lambda t so that means um, what is the probability of being in state 1 uh, since now repair is there um, see lambda is failure and mu represents the repair so transition probability for repair a component is being uh, repair and going to the uh, available state okay uh, operating state and failure this path will take it to the failure uh, this path will take from failure to after repair to operating state so, uh, so uh, let us come back to that uh, defining the probability for the state 1 that is P1 T 1 minus lambda T okay and then uh, uh, how many arrows are coming in and going out that will define how that many number of terms. So uh, second term will be, uh, will be uh, lambda delta T and third will be entering into mu delta T please remember these terms uh, with the transition probability and how the equation will will be there uh, remember these states i have explained to you uh, so uh, so probability of being in state 1 can be given as uh, we have p1 t plus delta t 1 minus lambda delta t p1 t and the repair component which is bringing the system back to the state 1 mu delta t p0 t okay so this is the equation now we know that how we solve uh, uh, we rearrange this equation and get into uh, p t1 delta t uh, minus uh, p t p t and the divided by delta p convert into differential equ equation um, and finally there are two three methods to solve this uh, this is very important uh, uh, either so if there are only two vari uh, unknown variables then we can solve this equation by uh, usual methods you know algebraic uh, equations but if uh, there are more than one terms then uh, the determinants uh, are used uh, uh, matrices and determinants the methods are used uh, third method is laplace transform that can uh, that can be used because uh, as the uh, complexity grows the uh, simple arithmetic equation uh, they don't provide uh, effective mechanism to solve the problems uh, and uh, the Laplace transform is uh, one more and then uh, numerical equations numerically also you can solve the equation but the procedure is very cumbersome you require computer to solve this equation delta x 
or delta t increase and you see the area under the curve and then what is the probability of being in. So, uh, the various methods can be used. Uh, in this lecture, we have used the uh, uh, Laplace transform approach uh, as we can see from uh, this slide, next slide onwards, uh, the Laplace transform uh, 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 route we have taken and few more Markov models we have solved uh, in this uh, uh, lecture. So, the equation will become uh, P 0 t plus uh, delta t is equal to 1 minus lambda, uh, mu delta t P 0 t plus lambda delta t P 0. We can see the figure and then we can uh, and finally, then we get these two equations from P, uh, P 1 modeling and P 0 modeling and we, we got this, uh, we got uh, this uh, uh, two equation uh, here del P 1 upon uh, del P t upon del t is equal to minus lambda P 1 t plus mu P 0 t. This equation onwards, either this can be solved either by matrix method or it can be solved by, uh, uh, by Ranga Kutta method that is numerical method or it can be solved by Laplace transform. I have, I have gone for the root of Laplace transform because in Laplace transform it is any of course it can be solved by some computer, uh, uh, computer environment also just uh, input this equation give the boundary condition and probably you will get the solution. So, we go here for, for Laplace transform mode. So, the above equation can be solved using Laplace transform. The initial condition of the problem is at time is equal to t is equal to 0. The probability that the component will be in operating state is 1. So, hence P1 0 is equal to 1. That is probability of being in state uh, 1 uh, with the time 0 is, is 1. Okay? And, and P0 uh, probability of being in state 0 uh, at uh, 0. Uh, uh, will be 0 okay? because it, this is the first boundary uh, condition. That is the probability that the component will be in state 0 at time t0 is equal to 0. Uh, so, this meets the real time considerations and uh, now uh, we, uh, we create, you, we know that Laplace transform of some, uh, some differentials dg by dt is nothing but s. s is a special parameter for Laplace transform and it is uh, gs minus g0. Okay? The term g0 is the, uh, is the uh, value of the function at time t is equal to 0, it could be 1 or what, you know, derived from the initial condition. Laplace, uh, taking Laplace transform of the equation phi and 6, that means the previous page, whatever equation we had shown. So, we get sp, sp1s minus p1, uh, p1 0 minus lambda p1s plus mu p0. It is uh, simply taking La Laplace transform on the both sides and since time t, uh, t is equal to 0, P, P, P1 0 is equal to 0, we have uh, this term uh, uh, SP1 uh, S minus 1 lambda PS1 uh, lambda P1 S plus mu P0 S or uh, we sort of rearrange it and then we see SP1 S plus, uh, plus uh, lambda P1 S that means right side term goes to left side uh, along with the mu term mu P0 S and that is equal to 1. So, this is the uh, equation we have arrived at. Um, rearranging again on both the sides, we, we take out P1s, uh, uh, P1s, uh, now we take out P1s, uh, common s plus lambda remains there minus mu p0s is equal to 1. This, this is first equation uh, we have. Similarly, for the other equation p0t, uh, p0t dt, uh, is equal to minus p0 this, uh, uh, this situation we arrive and then taking Laplace transforms. So, again s p0 s minus p uh, is equal to 0. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, transform Laplace transform will tell us minus p0 s plus uh, lambda p1 s. Again we rearrange the equation and uh, we arrive at lambda p1 s plus s plus mu lambda p0 s is equal to 0. So, we get the equation at. Okay? Now, uh, here we get P1 s is equal to 1 plus mu P0 s s, s plus lambda uh, divided by s plus lambda. Okay? Now, we put this value, uh, putting the value of P1 s into equation 8, which we saw earlier and we get this equation. Okay? So, here if we, if we solve it for uh, P0 s here, the here and here, we get P0 s is equal to s upon uh, lambda upon s plus uh, s into s plus lambda plus mu uh, and solving for p1s 
we will get P1S is equal to S plus mu. So these two equations we have solved. And now uh, taking the inverse, once we took the Laplace transform, we have to take inverse also. So we, uh, we denote lambda is equal to x and mu is equal to y. This is very important. This substitution is very important. Lambda and the a judgment is required for, uh, for, for substituting the values because we have to see how to solve the equation. So s plus mu uh, divided by uh, s into s plus mu uh, lambda plus mu and is equal to s plus uh, y s into s plus uh, z. Okay. Now you, we, do, we do partial fraction for this because we have to arrive at the solution for uh, p p01 and p uh, p1 t. So uh, we have this s plus lambda uh, s plus y this part and we have partial fraction of this. So we get partial fraction a upon s plus a, uh, b upon s plus lambda. And if we take the uh, LCM and we get this particular equation. Now these two uh, bottom side are same. So we can get s plus y is equal to a plus s plus lambda. So we arrive at the value of a that is y upon z and y value of b uh, a uh, uh, value of b is equal to Z, uh, Z uh, minus Y upon Y. Okay, so so now if substitute this value in P1S and uh, um, we get uh, whatever that old uh, our formulation uh, is equal to Y upon ZS plus Z minus Y upon Z uh, and into the uh, uh, this partial fraction part B actually. So A part and B part. And taking the inverse Laplace transform uh, as follows. So we, we have this inverse Laplace transform for the, this one. Finally, the same procedure uh, value y lambda plus mu we substitute here. We know that uh, inverse Laplace of 1.7 is equal to 1 upon s is equal to 1. And inverse Laplace of 1 upon s is equal to exponential lambda t. So we get. Uh, inverse Laplace is equal to 1 and this one already said. Then P1S we arrive at this. So mu upon lambda plus mu plus lambda upon lambda plus mu exponential component is there. So if uh, AT denotes the availability of the component uh, then P1T is equal to AT which implies that is probability of being in state 1 gives the availability. So mu upon lambda plus mu uh, plus, uh, plus lambda upon uh, lambda plus mu exponential minus lambda plus mu t. So this is the equation for uh, av availability. And so uh, with this, we see the way we have obtained the uh, t uh, equation for availability, we can obtain the equation for unavailability also. Uh, P02 term uh, we will evaluate and I, I think even we can obtain from P1T also, uh, 1 minus P1T uh, is, will give a availability. So, uh, so uh, this is the way we have used a complex Laplace transform procedure. But if we want to obtain through some formulas and all, this is the uh, apt approach. You can use, use uh, determinants or matrices also, ma matrix equations also uh, to solve this problem or even uh, if you want, we can use the Runga Kutta method that is a numerical analysis method. Uh, but numerical analysis method they are considered appropriate methods. So to the extent possible use analytical methods for solving this differential equation. Markov model approach is effective in solving state space problem. This is overview now. We have come to the last slide of this presentation. However, Markov model approach becomes complex for multiple components in a state due to state explosion. Even computers uh, uh, take time are not able to solve this uh, type of equation. Therefore, a computer software platform is advised, but sometimes a complex uh, Markov network uh, it might be, it might get, get into the state explosion and finally uh, it may not give solution. Given though in this lecture a Laplace transform approach has been used when equation becomes higher order form, then numerical approach as I was mentioning uh, can be used or matrix approach can be uh, used to uh, handle the complexity. Here in the lecture availability equation was derived with failure and repair rates as the parameter of the model. So with this we come to the last uh, last lecture 
uh, on uh, system modeling and uh, uh, this particular lecture was there on Markov modeling. Uh, my, uh, my submission is like this. Uh, whatever has been taught so far, um, if, uh, uh, if you have understood and bring in the practice, uh, then um, you are already into probabilistic risk uh, assessment uh, analysis. Because uh, uncertainty and all those things, they can be plugged in uh, later on by modifying the reference model of the plant. But uh, risk modeling can be done. And prob probably if I say that uh, event tree and fault tree are the major component of uh, probabilistic risk assessment, the, then you have already qualified to uh, start uh, the probabilistic risk assessment. Now re remaining lectures will be of uh, uh, special interest like uncertainty, then physics of failure methods, uh, then, uh, then prognostics and health management. Some of them are application and some of them are uh, adding to the uh, academics of the um, risk modeling. Thank you.